guys! Welcome to another exciting episode of Let's Get Loud. I'm your host, John Mar, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you today. Now, before we dive into our riveting discussion, I want to introduce some incredible individuals who will be joining me on this episode. Today, I am honored to be surrounded by three remarkable co-hosts, Miss Princess, Miss Cristel, and Miss Fatima. Absolutely, John Moore. It's an honor to be part of this podcast and I'm excited to bring our perspectives and let's make this episode memorable. Thank you for that very warm introduction, Janmar. I am very thrilled also to be here and I'm ready to dive into today's discussion and share some insights with our listeners. Thank you, ladies. Together, we're set to embark on a journey through today's topic, exploring the law and sharing insights. So, without any further ado, let's jump into another engaging episode of Lex Get Loud. For today's podcast, our topic is about plagiarism versus copyright infringement and how to cite correctly to avoid plagiarism. Our esteemed guest speaker is a former professor of intellectual property law and legal writing at the University of Cebu School of Law. He completed his Master of Laws in Intellectual Property at the Queensland University of Technology and his doc- Juris Doctor and Psychology degrees from the Ateneo de Manila University. Today, he serves as a consultant for the United Nations World Intellectual Property Organization or UNWIPO and carries out IP awareness raising and capacity building missions all across the Asia Pacific region. Everyone online, our guest speaker is attorney Mark Robert A.D. LLM. Good evening, attorney. Welcome to our podcast. How are you today? Hello, good evening. Um, I'm I'm uh, talking to you from Adelaide, South Australia, and it's nice to see some former students um, conducting this interview. And I'm happy to, I'm always happy to help uh, in the UC law students in any way I can. So this is a great opportunity to um, to start this conversation. Thank you so much, Attorney. It's really an on. It's really a great honor to to that you accepted our offer to be our guest speaker, Attorney. So, Attorney, our topic for today is again plagiarism versus copyright infringement and how to cite correctly to avoid plagiarism. It is but fitting to start by defining some terms for our listeners, Attorney. So, Attorney, how do we define plagiarism and copyright infringement? Okay. Um. Thank you, Janmar. Um. Plagiarism, uh, it comes from the root word uh, plagium, uh, a Latin word, which means to kidnap. So it's very serious in, in that sense. But it literally means, today it literally means taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. So the main issue here is ang pag-angkon, no? Or taking credit for work that does not belong to you. So it's either you do it deliberately by cutting and pasting or through negligence no, by failing to cite your sources. On the other hand, copyright infringement um, includes the reproduction, distribution, performance, public display or adaptation of a copyrighted work without the owner's permission. So the main issue here is ang paggamit ng way pananghid, no? Get using something without permission. So when you copy or use someone else's copyrighted work without their permission, you are committing copyright infringement. 
thank you for that attorney just to um further um understand these two concepts um how do we differentiate these two concepts attorney the plagiarism and the copyright infringement okay thanks for the question princess uh they are quite related because they deal with copying and they deal with um, use of work um, but they are quite different in application and um, by nature plagiarism is an ethical academic and professional violation so it um, on the other hand copyright infringement is a legal issue so it's um, it's dealt with by law while plagiarism is um, more of um, admin an administrative um, issue uh, when it comes to someone in school or in a professional organization um, as for the legal status uh, plagiarism is not explicitly addressed as an offense in our law instead it is dealt with through institutional policies and uh, academic sanctions and copyright infringement while copyright infringement is governed by the IP code of the Philippines Republic Act 8293 so it defines the rights of copyright owners and outlines remedies and penalties for infringement so what are the consequences of each for plagiarism you could um, based on the the UC student manual you can be expelled no? for for um, committing plagiarism it can you can fail your subject or you can be expelled you can get a probation you can uh, professionals can lose their reputation and they will lose their career prospects now that can cause a lot of embarrassment in your professional life um, for copyright infringement um, it can lead to civil and criminal liabilities if it's serious enough um, and civil consequences may lead to uh, lawsuits financial penalties, cease and desist orders, and uh, criminal consequences can include fines and imprisonment. So as an example, plagiarism example would be um, submitting a term paper um, with paragraphs cut and paste from a different source and without, um, without any references no? or uh, failing to cite your references correctly. Um, an example of copyright infringement would be um, photocopying, photocopying books and, and perhaps selling them. So this would be a, a, a case of copyright infringement. Oh, I see. How about the misconceptions on copyright infringement? Can you tell us about these misconceptions, attorney? Okay, Crystal. Uh, a, a big misconception about copyright infringement is that um, some people assume that um, students can do anything uh, and they can use um, work without referencing them because it's part of fair use now they assume that they have fair use because they are still in school which is not true um, if you look at section 184 of the IP code uh, fair use operates under very specific conditions so these conditions you have to look at the purpose of your use. You have to look at the nature of the copyrighted work. You have to look at the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the whole work. And you have to look at the effect of the use upon the potential market. So there are things you have to consider before you claim fair use as a defense. And if you misunderstand these limits, it can lead to infringement. You can. Uh, when you wrongly assume that you are exercising fair use, you will end up, you, know, um, you might end up uh, liable for infringement and you can't raise the defense once a lawsuit is raised against you. Oh, thank you so much for that, attorney. Law students and other students take note of what attorney said on the fair use doctrine. So, attorney, how about the common misconceptions or misunderstandings about plagiarism? Okay, uh, thank you, John Mark. Uh, well, a common misconception about plagiarism is that 
uh, people assume that minor alterations to a text, such as paraphrasing or translating to another language, can avoid plagiarism. Now, this is not true. So, an example would be a famous example would be uh, Senator Soto's case. No? If, if you're familiar with that, um, as his speechwriter uh, translated some cap some um, passages from uh, from a document, or was it? Uh, I think it was a book, and used and they used it for his speech. So they translated it from English to to Filipino, no. And it still was considered plagiarism, even if it's just translated. Because translating, you don't really add anything to it. You just transform it to, into a different language. And um, if you fail to cite your reference in that case, you are still passing off the work as your own. So that can still be considered plagiarism. So it's important to know how much you have you can change you can you can borrow ideas from people but you have to you know express it in your own way and thoroughly in your own way instead of just um, mind um, paraphrasing it in in small ways and um, that will have to be your standard you have you have to you have to add something to it to make it your own it's, it's not enough to just paraphrase or to translate something Thank you, attorney. Just to add, attorney, um, uh, what are the or what we should what should we do to avoid um such off- uh, offenses, attorney? So, is um for copyright infringement since this is a uh, violation under the law, and then for plagiarism on the other hand, uh, which is a unethical violation uh, uh with regard to uh, school practices and even in um other institutions attorney so how do we avoid committing such offenses and how do we how can we cite correct people okay thank you princess but to avoid plagiarism you need to number one uh, credit your sources correctly no? so citation so whenever you use someone else's work whether it's a direct quote a paraphrase or a summary make sure to provide proper attribution and this means citing the source correctly according to the citation guide required, acknowledging the original author, the publication title, and other details. You also need to understand what it means to be to write ethically. No? So it's not just citing sources. Um, ethical writing means uh, a deeper understanding of when and how to use other people's work. So it means not just copying text, but incorporating it meaningfully into your own work adding value through analysis through critique or through synthesis so you you use these things to transform and to add value to these works Uh, to avoid copyright infringement on the other hand you need to understand the law understand legal boundaries so familiarize yourself with the ip code the context of in the context of copyright this means understanding what constitutes protected content and how those how long those protections last and you also need to understand fair use so the ip code provides for fair use provisions and these allow limited use of copyright material copyrighted material without permission under specific uh, conditions so it's essential to recognize that these provisions have specific criteria and limitations and fair use is not a blanket permission for all uses but a set of guidelines that you need to meet to use copyrighted material legally uh in relation to the previous question attorney you mentioned about citing the sources can you share with us some of the uh, citation styles that are commonly used in the philippines okay still thank you uh for one we have what we call the blue book style and this is used by law schools and law journals in the united states and this style is prescribed by um Philippine law schools as well, like Ateneo Law School, because we like blue. And it's uh, so it, other law schools also use this. Though. I think Ariliano uses this as well. Um, 
for UC Law, I think you use OSCOLA. So it's OSCOLA is the Oxford Standard for Citation of Legal Authorities. Um, this style was developed by the Oxford Law Faculty and used in most uh, UK-based uh, law schools. And I think uh, UC Law likes to be British, so you, you're using this style, no? And the third most important one is the APA or the American Psychological Association um, manual, and it's the it's preferred in social sciences. No? And this style emphasizes the author date method for in-text citations, and it's used in multidisciplinary journals in the Philippines and abroad. So. If it's not just about law, you're also talking about social sciences, uh, sociology, um, psychology. This is a useful way to cite uh, your sources. And as a side note, UP developed its own style no? for the Philippine Law Journal. Uh, it's called the Maroon Manual. And I guess UP, they just like to do their own thing. So that's why they, they made their own style. Uh, for the next question, attorney, uh, which medium or mediums do you suggest that we use uh, these respective citation styles? So, um, where can we use these styles, attorney? Okay, uh, thank you, Princess. Uh, the answer to that is very easy. You don't get to choose, no? You just use the prescribed style of the institution or publication you are submitting to. So you follow the, your own rules. So if you're from UC, you follow the UC's, the UC's prescribed style. Or if you submit to the Philippine Law Journal, you have to use their style. Um, in any case, each of these styles require the inclusion of essential bibliographic details, such as the author's name, publication title, page numbers, and dates. So these are all crucial for locating the original source material and accurately crediting the author of the referenced work. Thank you so much, attorney, for those valuable insights. Surely, those are very helpful to our avid listeners in Spotify. Any last words to our listeners, attorney? Uh, thank you, John Mar. Last words. Uh, well, as lawyers and teachers, we should set the bar for ethical behavior and professionalism. So we have a responsibility to be honest, to respect other people's work, and to follow the rules on intellectual property. And our commitment to these values isn't just isn't a choice. It's a fundamental part of our role. So educate yourselves and others about respecting copyright and avoiding plagiarism. There's so much information out there and you just need to take time to read them and apply them to your work, your studies, and your social media activity. So it's a small step that goes a long way in preserving your credibility and the quality of your content. So by practicing these principles, we preserve the integrity of our field and inspire the next generation of legal professionals to do the same with dedication. very very inspiring last words attorney that we will really remember and carry to our throughout our legal profession life so um and that brings us to the end of another insightful episode on lex get loud what an engaging discussion we've had today before we wrap up i would like to thank our special guest attorney mark robert ad for those wonderful insights and for imparting his knowledge to us our avid listeners, thank you for tuning in. Always remember that credit to whose credit is due. Until next time, this is John Mark and our incredible co-host signing off from Let's Get Loud.